Hello and welcome back to CSS3 Animations. Now that we've gotten our delays working, where we have one piece of text animating and then the second piece of text has a short delay before it animates in, now that we've done all that, let's finish out these button animations so that they look like what we've got here, where the text is animating but also the image on the left is expanding out and disappearing, but we also have a little after image of that particular image left on the button. So we have a slightly transparent version of that image that shows up beneath it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, create the animation for the background color, which should be pretty easy. We're just going to brighten up the background color and the inner shadow that's associated with it. So let's jump into our code for lesson nine. We're working in lesson nine now. And in our CSS3 animation.css file for lesson nine, we'll go up to the top of the big buttons section, which is which starts around line 123. And when we hover over that button, we want to brighten up the background color, the border around the button, and the shadow. So we're going to brighten up the uh, the box shadow that's around it, the uh, the drop shadow to the bottom right edge. We're basically just going to make it a little bit bigger. We're going to keep the same distance and the same color, but we're going to make that shadow a little bit bigger. And then the inner shadow that's inset within it, we're going to brighten it up a little bit. So we're going to apply that to the button itself. So inside that button rule, after all of the other properties and attributes, let's create a transition here. So transition all zero point and let's let's make this one take up half a second so 0 0.5 seconds space and then we'll use the ease function so then i'm going to highlight that copy it paste it three times and put our vendor prefixes here so we'll do it for webkit for mozilla and for opera and then we have our basic transition property as well and we want these changes to happen whenever we hover over the button. So let's create another rule. Oops, I gotta spell that right. Dot button colon hover. So when we hover over the button, what do we want to happen? Well, we wanna brighten up the background color. So let's change the background color here. Uh, before the transition, it's set to 4AE. After the transition, we're gonna set it to 6CF. So it's just a brighter version of that same blue color. We're also going to brighten up the border a little bit. So we're going to set border equal to one pixel solid. And then the color we're going to use here is just a little bit brighter than the default color of the button. We're going to set it to 4AE. And then the third thing we're going to do is we're going to brighten up the box shadow. So again, remember there are two shadows applied to this button. The first one is the light gray drop shadow behind the button that's down and to the right of the button. And then the second one is the bright blue inner shadow in the top left corner of that button, which makes it look like a bevel. So down here in the hover state, we're going to keep the same size or the same uh, distance for that drop shadow, one pixel by one pixel, but we're going to bring up the blur of that shadow uh, from two pixels to five pixels. So it's just going to expand out a little bit, the shadow that's behind the button. It'll expand out a little bit and it'll be a very subtle effect that most people probably won't even know, uh, but it's gonna look good. And uh, we'll also give that the exact same color that we have up here, that same gray color. We're not gonna brighten it up, we're just gonna expand it out a little bit. And then for the inner shadow that uh, serves as a bevel on the button, we're going to give it the same size it has above, or the same distance, which is one pixel by one pixel. We're also gonna give it the same size, which is one pixel. We're just gonna brighten up the color. So instead of six CF, we're gonna use nine EF. And again, we need to make sure we type in inset there. So let's test it to see if it works. We'll save our file, jump back into our browser, and we need to move to lesson zero nine slash index.html. And then let's see if that works. We hover over it and the notice, first of all, the drop shadow behind it to the bottom right of the button, it expands out a little bit. And then the background and the inner shadow and the border of the button all brighten up whenever we hover over it. And that happens for all of our buttons. So, so far, so good. 
Now the next step is going to be a little bit tricky. If we go back to our preview here, when we hover over the image, we see that the icon within that button expands and disappears, but it looks like there's another image behind it that's just slightly transparent. And that's actually exactly how we have it set up. We actually have two images here in our HTML file and using absolute positioning, we've just set one on top of the other. And then the one that's on top, we're expanding out and making it disappear. The one that's on bottom doesn't move at all, but it's set to a semi-transparent uh, opacity. So let's jump back into our code and see how to make that happen. So the first thing I want to do in our index.html file, we have our list of buttons here. We have four different buttons. And inside that button, we have one image and then we have our text. Well, what I want to do here is to create two separate images that are identical to each other right next to each other. So we're going to have one button that hovers over another button. So we'll give this first image a class of over and then I'm going to highlight that entire image tag, copy it, and then we'll put our cursor after that image tag and then paste it. So we've pasted the same image and we have two images right next to each other that are exactly the same. The difference is for the second one, we're going to change the class to under. So we're going to do that for the rest of our buttons. So our button down here, we'll give this first image a class of over and then we'll highlight that entire image tag, copy it, and then we'll paste it after that current image. And then we'll change the class here to under. So we'll go to the next button. We'll give our first image a class of over. Then we'll highlight that entire tag, copy it and paste it and give the second one a class of under. And then one more time. So we'll give this first image a class of over. We'll highlight that image, copy, paste, and give the second one a class of under. So if we save it right now, we're not really going to notice a difference. If we go to our file and refresh it, everything looks the same. And that's because we've absolutely positioned the images within that button. So basically they're sitting right on top of each other. So we already have them where they need to be because of our code and our CSS. If we go to our button space image rule here, notice that each of these images has a position of absolute and a top left value of six, eight. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the image with a class of over is above the, the image with the class of under. So we're going to do that using the Z index. So we'll skip a couple lines here after the image rule and we'll create another rule for button space image dot over. And we're going to give that a Z index of 500. Then we'll create another rule for the under image. So button space or dot button space IMG dot under. And we're going to give it a Z index of 499. And since that's a smaller number, that will put this particular image, the image with the class of under, it will put it behind the button with a or the image with the class of over. And the other thing I want to do to this under button is I want to make it semi transparent because remember when that top button expands out and disappears, the button that's left underneath it is slightly transparent. So we need to make that happen here. So in addition to creating a Z index of 499, we're also going to set the opacity of that image to 0 0.25. And we could save that and refresh. It's not really going to look any different though. Everything still looks the same. We're going to notice the difference once we animate that top image out. So let's go back to our code and make that happen. So up here for our image over, remember that's the image that's on top. That's the one we want to animate. So inside this rule, we need to create our transitions. So we'll create the same transition we've created before. So transition colon all space and let's make this one take 0 0.3 seconds. We want it to happen fairly quickly. And then we'll use the same ease function that we've used before. So again, like we've done before, I'm going to copy that, paste it a few times, and then we're going to use our vendor prefixes here. And the reason I'm showing you this over and over again is so that it will drill it into your head so that you'll memorize it. 
and never forget to do it. Okay, so there's our transition. Now we need to create the end state for that transition. And what we wanna do when we hover over that image, we want it to scale upwards and we're also gonna rotate it 20 degrees. Again, if we go back to our test, we can see that it's not only growing and disappearing, but it's also rotating ever so slightly. Uh, so let's go back to our file here in the lesson nine folder. We'll jump back into our code and we'll make that happen. So we've created the transition itself. Now we just need to create the end state for our transition. And we're gonna do that by creating another class or another rule here for dot button colon hover. So when we hover over the button, we want to point to image dot over. So the image tag with a class of over, and we want to make it expand and rotate and we want to make it disappear. So we're going to start with the transform property and we're gonna set the scale here to five. So scale and then five in parentheses and then after those parentheses space and then we're gonna rotate it 20 degrees. So inside parentheses here, we're gonna type 20 DEG. So we're gonna scale it upwards to five times its normal uh, height and width and then rotate it 20 degrees as it scales upwards. And then on the next line, we're just gonna set the opacity to zero. So it's gonna fade all the way out. So we'll, it'll be see-through basically. So then once again, we need to apply all of our vendor prefixes here. So let's paste that four times uh, because with the transform property, we we're also going to include a vendor prefix for Microsoft. So first we'll have WebKit, then we'll have Mozilla, then we'll go ahead and do Microsoft, which is MS, and then Opera. So let's save that and see if it works. We'll jump back into our file, refresh our page, and there we go. Now we have the effect we're going for. And if you wanna adjust the opacity of that image that lies underneath it, you can do that. If it's too faint for you here, then you can bring up that opacity to maybe 0.5 or 0.75. I kinda of like it where it is at 0.25. So it's just barely there. It's just kind of a shadow of what used to be there. And I think that looks really good. So that's how you can create these fantastic customizable button animations using CSS3. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.